Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. This is Ethan. This is Felicia. And today we have a special guest for all the parents that are mad about the system right now, especially in California. Today we have a very special guest that she is going to talk about what you can do as a parent. Uh, she is from Make California Gold Again. Her name is Sarah Stevens. Hi, yes. Sarah. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Can you introduce yourself uh, a little bit and uh, talk about your organization? Yes. Uh, my name is Sarah Stevens, and I'm a I'm a wife. I'm a mother of six children, <laughs> and six. Um, yeah, my kids' names are Joshua, Liberty, Justice, Glory, Honor, and America. Oh. <laughs> so we're a patriotic family. My husband was in the military for over 13 years, so we're all about God and country. That's great. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, like, you have a child name is America. Yes. So every time you cover, hey, America, that's a girl, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so we're just, you know, my husband and I are ministers. We're pastors, and so we love God. We love His people. We love California. We love America. We're believing for this state to be a Christian, mm -hmm. uh, a Christian state, and a Christian nation again. And the only way that we're going to be able to change. California is if the Christians stand up right now. So we have an organization called Make California Gold Again, mm -hmm. and God's given me this vision to redeem the whole state, but it's going to take all of us. And we need Christians to rise up right now because if you really look at what's happening, you can look at Hollywood, you look at the education system, you look at the businesses, you look at basically California on every level is completely sinking. Mm -hmm. And so we need leadership. And it's time for the Christians to take back everything from Hollywood to our education system to business. This can be the gold state again. We can do this. But it's the hour of the church for the Christians to rise. You obviously live here all your life, way longer than me. But what do you think the church has, has done different? Because we have, we, we, we used to be a very Christian driven state. Yes. And then everyone is about God and countries and then... Uh, all the pastors in we, we have the most mega church. We have the most conserv conservative churches. We have John MacArthur. Yes. We have Jack Hibbs, all these yes. great pastor, great congregation. Yes. What happened in uh, American's church or California's church uh, from what you see? Yes. So I'm actually really good friends with Pastor Rob McCoy, who's out of Ventura County. And he was a part of the Calvary Chapel movement for years. And if you guys know a little bit about Calvary Chapel, Chuck Smith was this basically amazing revivalist. And all these people got saved. And there's like literally uh -huh. thousands of Calvary chapels across California and across the country. And so many churches, we've been so busy about the kingdom. We really have. All we've been doing is praying and bringing people to Christ and saving souls. And that's been our focus. Mm -hmm. But because that was all we were focusing on, we neglected the public square. So a lot of churches here in California, we didn't really pay attention to the school board meetings, the city mm -hmm. council meetings. We didn't really consider like, you know, running for office. That was never really on a lot of churches radar, right. unfortunately, <laughs> you know, and I'm just as guilty. Right. I, every time my husband used to show me a little video or whatever, I honestly was like, well, I don't care. Like, I just want to go save people. <laughs> <laughs> but then when I, when I realized that all of the highest levels in California from governor, lieutenant governor, secretary of state, all of the highest levels, and now school board, city council, mayors are all on the left and they have these horrible agendas of abortion and, you know, mm -hmm. the most radical agendas bringing in the trans movement, the LGBTQ. It's like all of a sudden now it's as clear as day that what were we doing the last 30 years, yeah. <laughs> you know, as Christians. And so now we have as a church, as the body of Christ, it is this is the hour of the church. We have to stand up. We have to stand up. We have to get involved. We have to run for office. And if we don't want to run for office, we have to get behind a Christian that's going to run for office. Right. We have to do whatever we can because the future of California is in the balance. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think what you said is very mm. important because I've been reading the Torah and then uh, in the book, it talks yes. about if you want to be a king, if you want to be a leader yes. among the Israelite, you need to read your Torah yes. and you need to copy it all the five books of Torah, yeah, all of them, yeah, and it that that's for you. Every Israelite have to do it. And if you want to run for office, you have to copy it twice. <laughs> yeah, handwrite. Yes, that's because 
they want to make sure that you are following the law of Moses. All the churches talk about like the five love language. Yes. And we never thought about how do we love God? Is yes. it like physical touch or anything? But Jesus said it very clear is to follow God's law. Yes. That is to, follow, uh, that, that is to love yes. God. And I think a lot of churches, like you said, focus on the word love for too long. Yeah. And they forgot how to love God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we love God with our heart, with our soul, with our mind, with our strength, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Ten Commandments, the first five commandments are about our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And the the second ten are about our relationship with individuals, with people. And so what's happened is now um, the church hasn't been engaged I'm not going to say in the real world, but we haven't been engaged. And now the enemy has taken over California. Mm. And so it is time for the Christians to stand up and not just stand up, but we have to unite. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're getting ready to do a big event, you know, here in downtown Los Angeles, because it is the hour of the church to unite. Because if we want to continue to see California go down as fast as possible, then we have to, then we'll just stay divided. Yes. But if we want to win the war, because we're in a literal war right now. You can't see guns blazing or anything like that. We're in a spiritual war in California. It is literally good against evil, God against Satan in this state. There is an agenda in place to destroy the next generation of our children. And we cannot let that happen. And it, you know, it started however many years ago when they let gay marriage be a cool thing. And it started with, you know, marriage and a kiss. And now we are totally talking about transforming children's bodies and literally the crazy things that are happening in schools where some kids are not even identifying as um, gay, trans, lesbian, this, that. Now they're even saying they're Furbies or furries and they're eating at school out of like, you know, dish bowls and all this stuff in high schools, out by me in conservative areas, in, Tem in Marietta and Temecula. Hmm. This is totally not okay. So the left has hijacked California and our public school systems. And we have to step up and say, this is not okay. This is our state. They think that they can control and run us. No, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> we are the children of God. We have the power of God behind us, but we have to put them in their place, basically. And how can we do it? Well, they've come over and they've made all these laws and all this legislation to make it cool to do all this stuff from abortion to now they're trying to make, it's totally legal right now in California for a boy to go in a girl's bathroom. Totally legal. It's totally legal for a boy to um, be involved with, um, or a, a boy to compete in girls' sports. Totally fine. No mm -hmm. big deal. It's like, how did this become okay? Yeah. yeah. It's because we fell asleep <laughs> at the wheel, basically. Mm -hmm. So now we have to wake up and realize how radical this is. And I know a lot of people are like, wow, this is really radical. Mm -hmm. Well, it's about ready to get 10 times more radical when they start doing hundreds of thousands of surgeries on these kids' bodies. And this next generation doesn't even look like it's supposed to. So we have to stop it and we have to stop it now. This is the only way. No. What then what can you do? Can you give us some uh, solution and suggestion? Yes. So the number one thing, the number one thing that every parent, you know, if you're watching, if you're listening, even if you're not a parent, maybe you're a college student, um, you're a Christian, you're a grandparent, whoever you are, maybe you've never had kids your whole life, but you care about this next generation. You care about the fate of California. What you need to do is there, uh, there's a thing called Protect Kids California, and it's an initiative that's going across the state right now. We need over 700,000 signatures in the next like month and a half by April 13th. And if we get these signatures, this will go on the ballot in 2024, so this November. Mm -hmm. And if we can have the majority, you know, I think it's like 50, however many, 2% to vote for yes, we have the, the say-so, this will get signed into law immediately. And what this initiative does is three things. It protects parental rights. Um, it protects girls' sports and girls' spaces. So boys in California will no longer be able to compete in girls' sports. They won't be able to go in girls' bathrooms. And the third thing, which is even huge, more big than that, which is so huge, is it will um, prevent any child under the age of 18 in California will not be allowed to take any hormone treatment, puberty blockers, or have any permanent surgeries on their body until after the age of 18. I want everyone to know this. Like, this is loud and clear, that this is a multi-million, multi-billion dollar industry 
that they are trying to create here in California, they have the blueprint. It's already in place. It's already in place in even some of the most conservative areas, like San Juan Capistrano. One of my friends, um, her name is Melissa, and she's with Moms on the Ground. And she has all the proof right now. She can lay it all out for you on a piece of paper. And it shows you the contracts from all the high schools with the hospitals, try, getting ready to do all of these surgeries on these kids. This is happening in the most conservative areas. So what we need to do is we need everyone in the state that calls themselves a Christian, that is a Christian, that loves Jesus with all of their heart. Just like we're, we've are we been so passionate about going out there and saving souls for Christ, we have to be <coughs> so passionate right now about getting these signatures. And um, if you go to our website, you, or you can go to um, timetostand.org. So timetostand.org is our little website that we created for this big event that we're getting ready to launch in Los Angeles in two weeks. Mm -hmm. But it also has the Protect Kids California petition on there. You just click on it, timetostand.org. You can download the petition, get as many signatures as you can, and mail it in. <laughs> if anyone needs any help, they can let us know. But this is the time. If we can get these signatures, Right after we get um, people to vote on it in November, this will be signed into law. These surgeries will be stopped. We will put Big Pharma in California out of business, and we can start start taking back the state for the children. This is the first step. So this is where we need all of our focus, all of our energy right now. So the bill is already written, and then uh, we... We just needed to send it, put it in the ballot. Yeah, so we have an initiative right initiative. now. Our, it's called Protect Kids California. Uh -huh. And the girl that actually wrote it, um, there's a couple of people that wrote it, but one of the girls that wrote it, her name is Erin Friday. And um, she's actually a Democrat. <laughs> oh. But the reason why she wrote it is because her daughter was at school and got completely brainwashed by the whole movement and started saying that she was a guy and all of this stuff. And before you know it, the police were called on my friend, Erin Friday, because she was saying, no, you're not calling my daughter this at school. This is not okay. And the police showed up at her house. And right now in California, if you're, if a parent says no, if the child wants to have a surgery and they say, no, I want to be, um, you know, I want to be a boy. So I'm going to have, you know, certain parts of my body literally cut off. Yeah. And the parent says no right now, the government can step in and take your child. Hmm. So this is at the end of the day, this is child abuse. This is actually human trafficking that's now working into our government, mm -hmm. okay? We already know we have a major human trafficking issue, but this is basically legalizing human trafficking. And the thing is, is that these children, and I'm sure everyone can understand this, children, they're so young, they don't know left or right half the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's so many influences going on and kids get, you know, they question about things and mm -hmm. it's their uh, formative years where they're trying to find out who they are, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. And when they're easily influenced to um, be told, oh, you can be whatever you want to be, you know, that's what brings the confusion. And these innocent children are just being completely brainwashed. And this has been going on for a while, but it's it's come to a head. And we have to stop it now. We have to stop it now. Yeah. What makes you think that this bill can is able to stop them? Because we tried it with gay marriage and then it people of california voted no right and then it went to the supreme court and then they did it anyway right we vote no against green new deal right but apparently we got it anyway right it, the, 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 a lot of conservative a lot of christians are frustrated they think like yes. our political system is not working what makes you think this time is gonna make a difference well i believe that number one anything and everything's possible mm -hmm. and that what if what if this whole horrible situation, God is going to somehow, right, like Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. So what if God is allowing this all to happen so that the body of Christ across California, the churches can now come together and stand and fight for this issue? And I believe that we can um, get this signed into law. In after no, the November election. I absolutely believe that we can get the votes that we need. And the reason why is because this isn't even just a conservative thing. Everybody, like, I'm, okay, I can't say everybody because there are some people that are for this, you know? <laughs> but I can tell you, when I'm out there talking to people, people think it's crazy. Boys going in girls' bathrooms, they think it's completely insane. They don't want their child to get raped or abused or molested at school. Like, people are like, California is just so out of their mind. Yes. You know, people are like, this is insane that this is even happening. 
you know, just like um, this last year, I'm a part of the California <laughs> GOP and we actually had to vote. Um, they wanted to sign gay marriage to be a part or a marriage between a man and a man and a woman and a woman mm -hmm. to be okay in the Republican Party of California. We had to vote on this like not even six months ago. And yeah. I'm like, what is wrong? What, like, so th we need, number one, we need a spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. We need Christ to just full blown show up. <laughs> we need the churches to call out to God and we have to unite and we have to believe that it's going to be possible because the thing is, is the enemy wants to keep us like, well, what if it doesn't work or what if, you know, yeah. and it's like, no, we have to throw that all aside right now because we have to go all in, right? Mm. Just like Jesus went all in for us. So yes. we have to go all in for him and we have to go in. For all these for all these children, and um, and one thing really quick, I was actually talking to one of my friends yesterday, and he went up to a couple of churches um, and some of his pastors, and he showed him the petition. Hey, we're we're fighting to protect the kids of California, you know, protecting girls' sports and all this stuff. And one of the pastors laughed at him. He's like, "Oh, this isn't even happening in California." And my friend was so hurt and so discouraged. He's like, "Sir, I've been going to this church for all these years, and the pastor doesn't even want to fight for the children." And I yeah. said, "You have to look at it like this." Okay, next. I said, I don't care if he says yes or no. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter because we just have to keep going yes. because we're going to keep getting the yeses. And we want to be partnered up anyways with the people that care and they're going to do something about it. So we just have to keep moving. So that's what we have to do. We can't let anything discourage us right now. Mm -hmm. We have to fly. This is our time to fly as Christians and to get these signatures and to believe that this election coming up on Tuesday and then in November, that this is going to change the history of California. I, th I think you touched on something that's extremely, extremely important. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, of, I know everyone's discouraged, but churches need to unite. United, we can do a lot. Yes. But mm -hmm. scatter, we can't do anything. I know that there's a lot of weird churches out there with LGBTQ flag on their uh, banner and everything right next to a cross or on the cross sometime. But we got to do this. If you want to save your kids, this is not a... Option. Uh, yeah, this is, this is not a government thing. This is a spiritual thing. Every church in California is under spiritual attack right now. And all the pastors that say that, well, all we need to do is just pray about it. No, God wants you to put your words, the, the words you preach every Sunday into action and you need to do something. And we're so excited because literally not even three weeks ago, God gave me a vision um, to do a huge event to bring together um, Christ pastors, Christians, parents um, across all ethnic, all denominational lines to take a stand for Jesus and to take a stand for the children of California. And I just started praying and I'm like, okay, God, if this is what you, you want me to do, you have to like open every door. And all of a sudden we had the biggest Korean church in all of Los Angeles, which is actually the most expensive church in the world. It's worth over a billion dollars because it's right there in downtown Los Angeles. And this pastor is the most one of the most well-respected Korean pastors in all of California and in Korea. And he said, no, I'm standing up for the children. And it is absolutely amazing. So we have a 7,000 seat venue and it's gonna be um, Saturday, March 16th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And so far we have, um, uh, pastors from all different walks of life, Egyptian pastors, black pastors, Hispanic pastors, um, <coughs> a Korean pastors, like you just name it. The list keeps going on and on. The body of Christ is coming together like we've never seen it before. And I know for years I kept praying, please, God, bring the church together. I want to see revival. I want to see. And it just never happened. And then COVID hit and then they told uh -huh. us they closed all the churches and then they said we couldn't sing in church. And I'm like, wow, that's like the most demonic thing I've ever heard in my entire life, you know? And why do they want to stop us from singing? Because our praise defeats the enemy. So, um, so anyways, we have some top-notch pastors speaking. We have over 25 organizations. Um the doors open at 1.30. If anyone wants to volunteer, we're looking for photographers, videographers, setup, cleanup, parking, you name it. Um, if anyone wants to volunteer, they can email us at info at timetostand.org. So that's info at timetostand.org. And if anyone just wants to come, please come and get educated because all the stuff that I was talking about earlier – of the horrible agendas that they have for California on Saturday, March 16th, it's all going to be exposed. 
Mm-hmm. We have people that are going to be exposing it all, calling it all out, and not just exposing it, but saying, now it's our time to stand up and let's get into some action. So we have a call to action. We have all these action steps that people can do. And I believe that this is going to be the moment in time in California that God is going to disperse you know, his angels across the state, <laughs> his unity across the state, and we, we're going to win in November. And we're going to get these signatures on this ballot. So Yeah, believe in miracles and believe in Jesus. Believe in your prayer. Yes. That is the most important. Uh, can anyone join this event? Yes, anyone. Well, anyone. You could be like, um, like I said, you could be a parent, a grandparent, um, anyone, any ethnicity, any, even any religion. We're opening up to anybody. But predominantly, it's a Christian event. You're going to hear about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, But this is all about just being educated and informed. So if you're wanting to make a difference in California, if you're wanting to save California, I would come extra early, um, come to get a seat, invite all of your friends, and come for a day that, seriously, it's going to be a day to remember. And I just wanted to say, too, um, and people, will, we will be live streaming it, too, but we want people to be there in person, mm-hmm. in person. So make sure you guys go to get the flyer on timetostand.org. And we have the Cross TV there. We have the number one Korean TV station in the world is going to be there. We have all these different media outlets. So please just come. This is going to be so huge. And let's make a difference together. Let's forget about, you know, their whole plan is to keep us all separated and divided. But the church, the people of God, the skin color means absolutely nothing. (laughs) We all have Jesus on the inside of us. And so let's have the body of Christ unite for something that is so important. And I don't think there's really anything more important in California right now than the children, Mm -hmm. the future of generations to come. So thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, We definitely learned a lot. And please, guys, sign up for the event, volunteer for the event. Be the salt and light of the world and then uh, just meet different people and unite as one to fight this nasty government that we have right now. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time.